Now the question is that, that why different people have different personality? All of you must be knowing that all of you do not have same personality. Why all of you have different personality? The main reason is that, that we are primarily driven by our unconscious mind. Let me tell you by an example. Let us suppose there is same situation and under same circumstances, do you think all of you behave in the same way? What do you think? My question is, under same circumstances, do you think all of you behave in the same way or slightly different way? Different way. Why? Maybe present circumstances are the same for all of you. But why would you behave in a different way? The reason being that our mind are having a lot of information about our emotional patterns, behavioral patterns, right? And about our thought patterns. And everyone has those patterns different from each other. Now from where those patterns come? Why under the same circumstances we behave in a different way? If you ask Sigmund Freud this question, answer question, he will say different people behave under the same circumstances in different way because they have different unconscious mind. Now the question is that what is unconscious mind? Right? Uh, okay, I will start asking you certain questions. This lecture is going to be an interactive lecture and by your answers we will deduct certain things. According to Freud, he says if all your mental activity is put into a container, suppose from Mr. Oztok, we take all his mental life, mental activity, all his thoughts, all his dreams, all his fantasies, all his memory, all his experiences, everything from his mental life we put into this container. Right? This container is having his all mental life, past and present. Now, what really happens that Freud says that there are three layers of the mind. One is very superficial layer. Some information is present in very superficial layer of mental life. And most of the things are in deeper layer. I will ask him certain questions. And let's see how he answers. Mr. Oztok. Do you know where you are present right now? You are sitting, uh, sitting in a hospital or lecture room or lecture. you know it. You know who are the people around you? Not all of them, but some. But you know some idea. Most of them are medical students or doctors. Correct. You are know, knowing where in the world you are? Yes. You know it? Okay. Yes. So he is aware of his self. He is aware of his surroundings. Right? And all this information is present in his, in his superficial layer and this superficial layer of mental activity in which all present aware, awareness is present, we call it conscious mind. Conscious mind. So what is conscious mind? Conscious mind is that layer of the mental activity about which we are right now very much aware. You know who you are, you know where you are, you know who are the people around you. All this activity is in which layer? Conscious layer of your mind. But there are certain other thoughts or fantasies or mental activity which are in deeper layer of the mind. And right now, you may not be aware of that activity. Again, listen. Right now, there is some mental activity and some thought or fantasy experiences are present in your mind which are not right now in your conscious layer. For example, I ask a question to this man. Uh, do you remember the first girl you fell in love with? You remember her? Good. Uh, were you thinking about that girl right now? Before I ask question, were you thinking about that very girl? You were right now thinking about that girl. Okay, he started blushing. I think we should go to some person who is less reactive about his first girlfriend. Okay, let's go to Mr. Oztok. I hope he ever had a girlfriend. Right, so Oztok, you remember that lady with whom you fell in love first time in your life? Yes, I do. You, I wasn't thinking about her. Okay, he make it clear. He says, yes, there was a lady 
and I was in love with her, but he says, right now, he was not thinking about that very lady. Is that right? It means all his memories or experiences or fantasies about that lady were not present in his conscious mind. But with little effort, he could bring those information to the conscious mind. Is that right? If I ask you that you have done your high school from which country? Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. But before I asked you a question, were you thinking about that? Yeah. No. But when I asked you a question, with little mental effort, you brought the information to conscious level. So what really happens that below this conscious layer, there is another layer of all mental activity in which there is a lot of information present. And from here, you can bring the information up to superficial layer. You have a lot of memories, a lot of thoughts, a lot of feelings present into this deeper layer. And with a little effort, you can bring this information here. For example, if I ask you how you got admission in Unibe, can you answer that? You remember somehow what was the process, how you got admission in your medical school? Or you don't remember at all? You do remember, right? Why? Because that information you can take from here up to here. So this layer of the mind from where you can take the information up to conscious level, this layer of the men mental activity is called pre-conscious. What it is called? Pre-conscious. So now we have talked about two layers of mental life. This most superficial layer of mental life, that is about your conscious layer. In conscious layer, you are only thinking about present, who you are, where you are, what you are doing, is that right, what is the time, you are aware of all these things. That is your conscious mental activity. But with little effort, you can bring some information from your past up to your present awareness, right? And this layer, which has past experiences, past feelings, and past Fantasies? Someone concerned about fantasies. Past <laughs> fantasies, right? And these all information can be brought to the conscious layer. So this layer is called pre-conscious. Is that clear? Yeah. Now we go to the real, real, real mind. There's a very deep area there. I think I removed this part. Below the conscious layer and pre-conscious layer, there's a dark area. Because there is some information here, you cannot bring it here. For example, I asked you a question. Uh, when you were about six months old, there must have been a time when you were tiny six months old. And you were crying, you were very hungry. Do you remember there was one Friday and you were very small, six month old baby and you were very hungry and you were crying and your mother... Uh, did not attend you immediately. Do you remember that? No. No. Okay. Then you remember another Sunday when you were about eight months old and you were very hungry and your mother immediately started breastfeeding you? No. You don't remember? He is telling a lie. Actually, his conscious and pre-conscious mind does not remember. This deeper layer of the mind remembers everything. Every, every experience which happens in your life Right? Every feeling you have and every fantasy you have that is present in your unconscious mind, the deepest layer. There's a lot of information present in deeper layers of the mind and this information which is present at this layer you cannot bring up to conscious mind with simple efforts. Let me tell you. Let us suppose one of you had a very good mother and who was the mother who was taking care of the person very good, feeding him properly, changing the diapers in time and emotionally keeping the baby very comfortable. You may not remember, but your unconscious mind must be remembering that, those group of experiences. And because when you were just one year old, and if your primary caretaker or mother was very good to you and she was giving good 
care care to you at that very time your whole world was only your primary caretaker at that very time your whole world was just your mother you never knew at that very time that what was happening in other countries what was happening in the wars you only knew if mother is good everything is good if mother is not good nothing is good you remember that now those times actually you have forgotten but your your unconscious mind has not forgotten those experiences now if you were treated very well during your first year of life you have been treated very well it means that those experience which are present over here they are not forgotten and they are still driving your behavior let me tell you how when during first year of your life you were taken good care you develop a trust to your mother that whenever you need your mother is there when you are in trouble your mother is there whenever you are hungry your mother is there whenever you are wet your mother is there so your little unconscious mind thought that whole world is good and as you decided at that very time you, your mind started trusting the mother right that those group of experiences are still in unconscious mind and now you are still carrying those experiences with you and now if you need to trust someone those experiences will help you to make decision that you should trust or you should not trust there are other people who are unfortunately in the first year of life not treated well and at that very time when they were not treated well they thought mother is not predictable mother is not trustworthy and their unconscious mind with those negative experiences is so strong that today when they are going to make a deal their unconscious mind is telling them not to trust now you may be thinking how our mind can be so full that project the experiences of first year of life and mother experiences to the rest of the world answer is that your unconscious mind does not think in a logical fashion your unconscious mind does not think in a logical fashion this is number one reality number two real logical thinking is conscious mind unconscious mind does not think in a logical fashion then there is another special thing about unconscious mind unconscious mind does not have a concept of past present and future when you are sitting here you can think about that these are the experiences of my present life you may think there are some experiences which happened in the past you may fantasize something about future but this all activity is preconscious and conscious mind the real the big layer of the mind the unconscious mind does not have a concept of past present and future whatever happened in your past all information which is present here is not considered as past experiences unconscious mind keeps them as present another trouble with the unconscious mind unconscious mind cannot differentiate between fantasy and reality unconscious mind cannot differentiate between fantasy and reality is that right whatever you fantasize for your conscious mind you know it is not real but for unconscious mind it is as real as real experiences so what i'm telling you about unconscious mind it's a big storehouse of information all of you have unconscious mind with lot of information all your life whatever good experiences or bad experiences you have whatever good feelings you had or bad feelings you had whatever good fantasies you had or bad fantasies you had whatever happened happened in your past that is buried in your unconscious and many of those things are buried so deep that with your special effort even by your effort you cannot bring most of this information to unconscious mind so you may think that you have forgotten those things but your unconscious has not forgotten those past experiences past feeling past fantasies it has just buried them 
and it has buried those all, all experiences, buried them as alive. Normally we have a concept, we bury something that is dead. But whatever is buried in your unconscious is not dead, it is buried alive. And it is still today, right now is working there. And it is still controlling your decisions of today. For example, I'm the same teacher to all of you. But do you think all of you like me in the same way or different way? Different way. Some of you may like me very much. Some of you may like me just little bit. And even some of you may hate me for no good reason. Why? Maybe problem may be your relationship in the past with your father. For example, if your father was very good with you in your life, then any other significant person come in your life, you will try to have positive experiences. And if you have some very negative experience from your father, you find a difficulty even to adjust with your teachers. The reason being, you may find that same teacher you may have the same teacher, but all of you may have different feelings about him. Problem is not with the teachers. The difference is in your unconscious previous experiences. Of course, some teachers are good because they activate good things of your unconscious mind. And some are really not good because they activate really not good things from your mind. Right? But you have to remember that today, whatever you did with the people or with yourself, you say that you did it logically, but actually you were controlled by unconscious mind. And this is the real control of your behavior. And this real control does not think in a logical way. That is why sometimes under the same circumstances, people may have different behaviors. Is that right? So is that clear to all of you? That basically personality consists of all your patterns of behavior, your patterns of emotional life, and patterns of your thoughts. But why different people have different personalities? Because they have different unconscious mind. Am I clear?